Our company's mission is to extract oil from the ground and provide energy for the world. Our environment here is extremely diverse. Animals, weather. In the winters, you can see minus 40, minus 50, minus 60. So you can't just walk out under the tundra and do things. In the past, we had to get a special permit to go out and inspect a power line. You got a problem out there and it needs to be fixed or looked at. Using the drones helps immensely. We have 5,000 miles of pipeline here. You know, you think about that stretched across the United States and then some. Being able to fly that is so much more efficient, safer, better for the environment, for the people, and better for the infrastructure. Since DJI and Genpac came up here, it helps them see what type of conditions we're flying in up here. If I'm calling Genpac and say, hey, we need this because of this, they can personally experience this up here and already know what I'm doing. We're here in the middle of the summer and it was freezing and snowing a couple days ago. You can't understand the conditions they work in up here, and it's really difficult to find solutions for them until you've seen it, where they work, the conditions they work in, the weather they have to deal with. All of those things help give me a better idea of how to support them in the work that they're doing up here with drones. So our relationship began sometime in 2022 when Jeff Chalfa got here. He's been a, a great advocate of their program, and our relationship with them has been ongoing and continues to grow, we're finding solutions for them every week. Jeff calls and says, hey, I have this problem, and we find a solution. So we look forward to continuing that relationship and continuing to innovate and help find new solutions in the application of DJI drones. Uh, the program actually started a guy who's a pilot up here. He suggested that, why don't we get a drone, fly our power grids, because you take out all the liability of a manned aircraft helicopter flying close to power lines, low, and those two combinations are not good in any aircraft, but rotary wing near power lines is a bad combination right there. So we decided to do that, so they tried it, and it worked out good. Then we got good data sets from the drone and the camera that spawned the program right there. That's where it started. We have nothing without power. So now with the drone, we can actually fly all our power lines. The L2 is a very impressive piece of equipment. You can send the drone right on its mission and it will map that whole line all the way for you. It's the, the line following capabilities of it uh, are amazing. I can see the point cloud being created right there real time in its flight. The density of that it's giving and the returns opposed to the L1 is giving us is double. So we're getting better data sets, we're getting it quicker. For us, speed really minimizes risk. If we can do something in two hours, what would have taken us four or five? We're reducing wear and tear on the equipment, wear and tear on the sensor, and we're getting information back faster and better information than we did prior to this equipment. The H30 versus the H20, you know, the technology that DJI is developing and what GenPak is finding for us, it's continuously improving. Now you have a thermal camera that focuses more clear, works better in the dark. When they need information, they need it now. Like they needed to know if one of their pilots was lit on their flare and there's no safe way to get a man out there. So we were able to just take the drone up and in 15 minutes, we were able to tell him, oh, yep, that pilot's out there. You need to fix that. You know, normally part of the plant would have to come down so somebody could safely go out there and look at that. It's hard to put a value on something like that. The thing about the DJI drones is the reliability of these aircraft. I can depend on them in conditions I normally wouldn't fly a drone in that we're in up here. I got to admit, when I first started this, I was very skeptical. Time and time again, that equipment has proved that it will get the job done. We've flown where there's potentially icing. We've flown in wind up to 50 miles an hour, and those drones can go out and you can fly for a half an hour. I just can't say enough good about that. You know, right now we're focused on our ground penetrating radar and that can be flown with our M350. We've got Burrow out here, so we're on the Tundra. We've got a lot of that to cover, which the drone mounted radar, GPR helps us a lot. Uh, we can put the GPR unit on the drone, have it in the air, flying a mission, in 15 minutes. That gives us access to area that would be more difficult for us to access because you just can't walk out onto the tundra. You've got to have a lot of permissions 
to do this. There are certain times of, uh, of year we really can't even get out there. This gives us a, an aerial component to acquire this information in the field. We can do it quickly, safely, and get the data sets that we need. The thing that excites me the most about it is to try all these new things. And over and over, they've been successful. You know, we've proved we can do it. We can do it efficiently, we can do it safely, and we can do it better. And I think that's really exciting. And it really excites me to see all the new technology. You know, I'm, I'm an old school thermographer and gas imager. You know, I'm used to walking around with a camera 12 hours a day, handheld camera, looking for leaks. The thought of being able to put that payload on a drone and flying over an area and then having that find the leaks, quantify it, tell us where it is. It, it's just amazing. That's exciting.